The fact is, <laughs> Saddam Hussein would still be in Kuwait and probably right down the Gulf and in charge of 60% of the world's oil reserves unless George Bush and Britain and other nations had taken action and thrown the tyrant out. Well, that was the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher, talking about the actions of the United Nations coalition forces. Well, it was essentially Great Britain and the United States and a few others acting on the United Nations resolution to get... Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait, a fulfillment of the fourth and fifth uh, trumpets, by the way, the trumpets of the Book of Revelation, which said that uh, the the uh, the events hap- that happened in Kuwait would happen for five months, and, uh, would happen against the people who did not have the seal of God. You know, Kuwait is a hundred percent Muslim country. And Margaret Thatcher died yesterday. I wonder how the Iron Lady would feel about this story. This story, now, this is amazing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, well, I don't know if they, well, the, the, the show producer here is telling me that we need to do a disclaimer before we report on the next story here. Uh, and you know, uh, Margaret Thatcher, she had some health issues in the latter part of her life, in her latter years, and she was likely unaware of all of this homosexual marriage uh, stuff going on in the world. Uh, But I wonder how she would feel about it. You know, she was a uh, conservative. Margaret Thatcher once famously said that the facts of life are conservative. And indeed, she's right. Uh, She was pro-family. She would have been staunchly against, you know, redefining marriage as anything but between a man and a woman. But, all right, I don't know. (laughs) They're telling me I need to do a disclaimer here. So uh, this story we're about to cover is out of Germany. And it deals with some uh, some of their sexual proclivities there. And so, if there's young children, if you have young children listening, maybe you should turn them, you know, turn on something else for them. But, uh, the story here is, you know, we've been reporting on the slippery slope aspect of the whole gay marriage thing and how it will lead to, you know, the embracing of many other, uh, many other lifestyle choices and the normalizing of, you know, other activity. And uh, the headlines now are proving that out to be true. You know, the the um, liberals and the atheists out there are, are jumping on the bandwagon here when it comes to normalizing, uh, you know, man with man with man sex, you know, sodomizing each other and, and uh, you know, being the greatest responsible uh, for the rise in in HIV AIDS, which, you know, reports the Center for Disease Control that, um, you know, essentially if men would stop having sex with men, then AIDS would become history in the world. And that's, that is a fact, that is a fact of life that people are ignoring. You know, they're saying, well, it doesn't matter. We shouldn't judge who people love. Well, it's not love to allow someone to, you know, are you really loving people when you tell someone they shouldn't drink and drive? That's love, right? When you tell people don't drink and drive, it's not right to do that. You could hurt someone, you could hurt yourself, right? We have no problem doing that. Yet, when people like us come out and say, look, stop sodomizing one another. Stop doing that. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting each other. Oh, well, you're just a hater and a homophobe and a bigot. 
Well, no, we want uh, we want healthy uh, people to make healthy lifestyle choices because it affects all of us. You know, at the very minimum, at the very minimum, the rest of us have to pay for it financially. We do because the homosexual lifestyle is a very unhealthy lifestyle. Unhealthy uh, is a is a uh, tame word to put on it. These people are suffering tremendously from from a great many diseases, and these diseases are are uh, making their way into the into the uh, normal population. And it is love to say, stop sodomizing each other, stop having sex with each other. You know, even lesbians have a fifty percent higher risk of cancer. You know, it's it's love to reach out to them, and just like it's love to take someone's keys from them at a party when they've had too much to drink. It is love to reach out. It's an act of love to reach out and say, stop doing that to yourselves. Stop doing that. You know, the, when, when people jettison the, the, um, the um, love waits message, that love waits until you get married. You know, once you, if you wait until you get married and then have all the wild sex you want with your marriage partner until you die, uh, you won't have to worry about sexually transmitted diseases and condoms and this and that. You won't have to worry about that. That's the message. When people jettison that message, they embrace the unrestricted liberal lifestyle, then what happens is uh, people uh, end up with these diseases uh, and the diseases that make their way into the regular population and, you know, there's a... There's a uh, there's a, a new story today that uh, little children, little babies are getting sexually transmitted diseases when they get circumcised because, um, you know, the, the instruments aren't being properly cleaned and, and uh, you know, babies are getting AIDS now and, um, and other sexually transmitted diseases. Well, where is this coming from? Where is it coming from? If people would embrace the love waits message and the the um, the uh, man woman uh, relationship message, none of this would be a problem. It just wouldn't. And that those uh, ladies and gentlemen, those are the facts of life. They just are. They just are. And if and if you are intellectually honest, you will agree to that. You will agree to that because the Center for Disease Control has outed you. They have the cat's out of the bag on this. It just is. And all the headlines today show, show it. So the headline we're talking about today is a slippery slope watch. And here's the headline. It's, it's, uh, it's from a, um, an English version uh, paper out of Germany called The Local. And the headline is, Zoo Files Protest Against Germany Bestiality Ban. As Germany tightened its laws against having sex with animals, zoo file advocates gathered in central Berlin on Friday to fight for their right to choose who or what they love. Uh, somebody named Michael and his partner, Sissy, have been in a caring relationship for the past seven years, which would be unremarkable if not for the fact that Sissy is a dog. And it goes on to talk about how, what an atrocity it is that they're made to feel like criminals. We feel like criminals. This is all because of fanatical animal rights demonstrators who think we hurt the animals. <laughs> Well, I mean, I know, I know, I know. Well, I, this is not a laughing matter. I only laugh because of the absurdity of it. Because they hurt the animals? So the animal rights demonstrators are all in, up in arms because they're hurting the animals. We love the animals, they say. We reject any kind of force, violence, and abuse. And it hurts our souls to see animals suffer. We are pro-animal rights, but we are being discriminated nevertheless. So you see the, the narrative here. They're extrapolating the discrimination narrative onto themselves, and they want justice. They say, we're just loving the animals. And 
The laws that prohibit bestiality in Germany are discriminative. We cannot do anything about being zoophiles, and so we are trying handling our inclinations responsibly. It's difficult to read this because it's almost like they're transliterating it from German into English here. But listen to the narrative. Here's the narrative. We love the animals, it reads. All we're doing is, is, uh, is we're just loving the animals. We're pro-animal rights, it says. No, but here, no. There's two things going on here, folks. They say that they're being discriminated against, right? But where do they get that from? They get that from the, the gay marriage uh, agenda. It starts with we're being discriminated against. And then they say, we can't do anything about being zoophile. So you see they're, they're born with it, see? They can't do anything about it. They're born with it. They can't do anything about it. How dare you discriminate against them? It's the same mantra that the homosexual rights groups have been trotting out over the years. They can't do anything about it. They're born that way, and they're being discriminated against. But here's, here's another thing going on here at the bottom here. Uh, they talk about a bestiality documentary coming soon to Berlin. Well, that ought to be a real humdinger. And uh, there's a point being made here. Uh, There is a production company that made this movie, and here's what they're saying. They're saying that although they're not zoophiles themselves, so they they don't take part in bestiality themselves, listen to this message. This will shock you. The production company behind the movie believes the issue isn't as black and white as many people think. So, to say that people should not have sex with their dogs, I mean, that is too dogmatic, they're saying. It's too black and white, and they're saying it shouldn't be that black and white. Now, this is, here, listen, to one, listen to this next sentence. It will amaze you. Here's what they're saying. Quote, banning it, banning what? Banning people having sex with their dogs means that millions of people in Germany are being criminalized. A spokesman from the company told the local earlier this week. Wait a minute. Banning it means that millions of people in Germany are... Banning bestiality means millions of people in Germany... Listen, folks. There's only 82 million people in Germany, between 82 and 85 million people. And these people are saying that millions of people in Germany are having sex with animals? That's what they're saying here. Banning bestiality means millions of people in Germany are criminalized. Millions of people in Germany are having sex with their dogs? That's what this this article is saying. How would the Iron Lady feel about this? Would she, if she were still Prime Minister, I suspect she may have a few words to say to the Germans. But alas, this is not something that we should be surprised about. Look for the zoo files to request the right to marry their, their dogs. Look for that. Because Jesus predicted it. In the last days, it will be as it was in the days of Noah. When all of the thoughts of people was only evil. Continuously, Jesus said. Even their marriage will be evil continuously. So we see the dynamics in play for the return of Jesus Christ. My name is Mike Shoesmith. You've been listening to P.P. Simmons Radio, the theater of the mind. We'll talk to you next time.